Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Concept suit, we're back on a more regular upload schedule now. Um, so this one is going to be a little bit different to our usual format because normally we like to sort of talk about the parts and then speed through like a fast forwarded build and then a bit of gaming. We're going to sort of mix it up a little bit this time. It's going to be a longer video. We're going to be going through one of our favorite designs, which is in the Thermaltake S100 TG. It's this uh, lovely white, um, sort of clean white aesthetic look with the... Uh, with the Gigabyte Vision graphics card. We'll flash up some images on the screen. Today we're going to be putting that together and I'm going to be walking through the entire process of putting the PC together and we'll be talking through it as we go. So if you want to recreate this build, it's something you can absolutely do. Just got to get yourself the graphics card, I suppose. But before we get into any of that, we've got to talk about our sponsor today, and that sponsor is me, my business, jcpccustoms.com, where you can pick up gaming PCs and some, you know, some occasionally you can get some parts from us as well, depending on what sort of overstock that we've got. But there are three main ways to get yourself a nice baller gaming PC. One is our ready-to-go PC section, which is PCs that we have already put together. They are ready to ship within two to three business days, and they don't have all those kind of regular pre-built um, fallacies that you see. So they're always got high-quality power supplies. The minimum we use is a 650-watt bronze, um, and they're all just very nicely balanced without any cut corners. Um, so they're a really good choice if you just want something off the shelf. We've also got our on-site configurator where you can choose from a list of parts for every type of component and you can sort of you know, build the burger if you like to put together your own gaming PC that way. Or if you'd rather get a bespoke quote or you have some very unique things in mind that you can't quite get on the website, then you can submit a custom spec request and we can make a completely bespoke PC for you based on exactly what you want. What we will do is we'll look at what you send us in, and then we might suggest some alternatives that might make better use of your budget, um, and then we can reach an agreement, and then it's done, and that takes about two, maybe two weeks to come through, um, and you can get a completely bespoke PC that way. And I did mention about some individual items that you can buy. We've got quite a lot of power supplies in at the moment at quite a good price, um, and we've also sometimes got graphics cards. I mean, it's probably one every two or three weeks at the moment, but... They're not MSRP because there's no there's no business out there that's getting these for MSRP at the moment. Um, but they're probably a bit cheaper than many of the retailers out there. Um, you've seen with their sky high prices. All of this at jcpccustoms.com. So go ahead and check it out. It is unfortunately UK only. So if you live in another country, Freyla can't help you there. Just because of having to account for the VAT and stuff is just not something I'm willing to do at the moment. Um, but check it out. Um, if nothing else, have a look around, have a look at the PCs, because they're the very same ones that we do build here on the channel, so you know they're high quality. That's the plug over, let's get into the video. So here we are folks, we're going to be going over the components we're going to use for this build, as well as why I've chosen them, and maybe some alternatives um, if you don't particularly like the style that we got here. So the processor we have today is the Ryzen 5 5600X. This is a 6-core, 12-thread processor with really good single core speed, which is going to be excellent for your CPU bound titles at 1080p. So if you're a big Warzone or perhaps Fortnite or Valorant or CSGO player and you want to get the maximum frames per second, this is an excellent CPU for the job. Um, we have it here on a tray today because we build hundreds of PCs, so we tend not to get them in the retail packaging. We tend to get what, what we call OEM uh, tray deals on some of our parts, so that's why they come in this kind of tray. Um, but it's the same as you would get in the retail packaging. Obviously, this is just in a, in a hard shell instead. When you have a nice CPU, you want something nice to cool it, um, which is could be the stock cooler if you like. However, for a bit of artistic flair and for a little bit lower noise levels, we're going to be going with a liquid cooler today, but we're not going to be breaking the bank. We're going to be using the ID Cooling Frostflow X240, and it's the snow edition, so this is the white version. It's going to look really good with our white um, theme today. It doesn't have any RGB, this one, however, it does have um, white LEDs in the pump head, um, so it's going to look really nice. And we're going to be replacing the fans on there with some um, RGB ones anyway, though you can use the free ones that come in the box, they just have white LEDs but don't have RGB. ID Cooling do make a, a version called the Zoom Flow which does have um, three pin ARGB fans. It's approximately 30, 35 pounds more expensive, but if you want to go for the full RGB effect, then the ID cooling zoom flow would be another really good choice for this build. 
The next thing I'd like to consider is the memory we're going to be using. So I've gone for this PNY Accelerate RAM. So there are two lots of eight gigabytes making 16 in total. This is DDR4 3600 speed with CL18. So it's okay RAM. It's pretty nice for Ryzen because that 3600 megahertz does tie in nicely with the Infinity fabric. But if you've got a nice deal on some 3200 megahertz CL16, perhaps without dropping it, um, this would also be a great choice as well. So pretty much the RAM doesn't really matter, especially we're going to be using an MSI motherboard today and their memory compatibility is very good. So pretty much any um, 3200 speed or faster RAM from a decent company is going to be fine. But of course, this RAM is nice with the decent speed and it's also got the um, RGB on it as well, which is going to add to some of the effect that we have. Next thing I like to consider is the motherboard. Um, and lots of people like to overspend on their motherboard and they want the Asus Strix and whatever, but it doesn't really add anything to the performance. And this board here is absolutely fantastic, even up you know, to a Ryzen 9 if that was something that you wanted to go for. This board will handle it no problem. So this is the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, which is a classic board that we use all the time because it's decent quality. The VRMs aren't going to toast too much because they do have a nice heatsink on them. You've got Wi-Fi built in, which is really important for a micro ATX size board. Um, most people don't need an ATX board, um, but it does look nice in a full ATX case. But today we are building an MATX build, so that's why this motherboard is going to be appropriate. And it's got all the RGB headers you need. Uh, it's got a front USB-C header, not that we need it for today's build, but that's a nice feature. Overall, it's a nicely balanced board that's going to fit really nicely into our usage today. There's really no point getting an expensive motherboard for the, the Ryzen 5 part. I can understand if you've got a Ryzen 9 CPU, you might want to go for a posher motherboard. But for our usage today, this is going to be absolutely brilliant. And the next thing I like to consider is the storage. So today's storage is the Crucial P2 one terabyte NVMe M2 SSD. This is PCIe generation uh, three, so it's not generation four. But for most people, especially gamers, PCIe generation four is a complete waste of money and you're gonna be spending so much money that could be spent on other parts of the build that will make more difference. It's been proven time and time again that your games are not faster on a gen four SSD, so why waste the money? Gen 4 SSDs are useful in very limited scenarios, so like if you're doing perhaps video editing and you want a nice fast scratch disk, that's when a PCIe Generation 4 is useful. But for gaming and consumer use, Gen 3 is the way to go, and especially this one is a very, very good deal. If you wanted something with slightly higher performance, a Kingston A2000 would be a good choice because it's got something called a DRAM buffer. But for gaming, again, it's not going to make very much difference at all. Only really would make a difference to people who like to watch files transfer all day, which is not us as gamers. And of course, this is what everybody is here to see. The graphics card today is the Gigabyte Vision RTX 3060. Um, this is an absolutely gorgeous video card. The design is so clean. It's one of the only white versions of the RTX 3060 that you can buy. It looks baller. And with Gigabyte, you do get um, decent warranty because they have a UK service centre. And the cooling on this is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, 3060 doesn't need much cooling. Um, it's going to look really lovely and clean in our build. And in terms of performance, it's going to be fantastic for 1080p gaming, particularly um, as we're going for people that like to play on competitive settings. This is going to be absolutely brilliant. And you can stream off it using the NVENC encoder as well. So really nicely featured um, card. And it's going to look absolutely baller in our white build today. So of course the next component on the list would actually be the case, um, but that's not going to fit in the shot that we have here. Um, but we are using the Thermaltake S100 TG case, but we'll see that when we go to the, the wider shot of the build later. But the next component we want to talk about is the power supply. Now this is an excellent deal on scan.co.uk at the moment, it's about £45. It's the EVGA 700BR which is a 700 watt 80 plus bronze power supply, which is way more than you need for this system, but the price is excellent. And having that headroom means the fan isn't gonna turn quite as fast. Overall, it's a well-built unit with plenty of voltage through the 12 volt rail, which is very important. It's not modular in any way. So all the cables do come out of the back of the power supply, but personally, I don't really care about that because you can easily stuff them um, in the cable management space um, without issue. So. This is a really great buy and it gives you plenty of upgrade opportunity as well if you want to put a 3070 in this system or another 70 class card absolutely no problem with this power supply here
And for a bit of artistic flair on the power supply, we're going to be uh, wrapping it using this white vinyl wrap that I picked up on Amazon. And that's going to um, just continue that sort of lovely white crisp look that we're going for in the build today. And further on our aesthetic theme, we have some white sleeved cabling here. And the thing we like about this one is this is um, what you can buy on jcpccustoms.com. It's, you know, you've got the combs and they go all the way around, so it doesn't matter which way around you turn the cable, you've always got it combed. Um, the plugs are white, and a lot of times the plugs are black on other ones that you buy, just a very clean look. Um, on this build it's not required, but um, our cables, you can also have them, so if we had two 8-pin connectors, you could have the comb covering both of them, which will look really clean, but we don't need it in this case um, for this particular graphics card. We've also got the 24-pin um, motherboard cable here, um, and that's going to make it look nice and tidy as well. We also have some RGB case fans here that we have um, just in our stock at the moment, so we wanted to use these, and because they've got a nice white shroud on them, they're going to look really great in this build. So the three here you see on the left are a few Cooler Master white ARGB fans that I had, um, which are going to look pretty nice. And we've also got a few ID cooling RGB fans that we had from a previous build where we replaced the fans on a liquid cooler. So I think these are going to look really great. These are three pin RGB and these are four pin RGB. So you get a little bit more of the addressable stuff on this one on the left. Um, however, both are going to look really, really nice um, and going to really complement the RGB effects that we're going to have in our build today. In terms of fans that I would pick if I was building this from scratch without using um, stock that I've got in, in the shop here today, I really do recommend the EZ DIY Moonlight fans, um, the RGB white version, because they just look absolutely gorgeous. And we might get a shot up on the screen where I've used them before, but in this case, they do look absolutely fantastic. So you could pick up a, a six pack of those, absolutely no problem. And that would look really cool in this build. Um, other choices, you could go for some Corsair SP120 RGB um, in white. Those would look pretty nice. Um, they're pretty nice fans as well. Or another really good choice would be Lian Li ST120s because they're actually a really great price and very, very, very good fans. So you could pick up two packs of those and that would completely fill out your case. Um, so those are some really good options you could go for if you don't have any lying around like I do. Now, whenever you're uh, implementing some RGB, you need to make sure you've got enough places to plug it in. So if you're buying some um, packs of RGB fans, like I mentioned before with the ST120s or something like that, um, you usually it will come with a controller, so you won't have to pick up any of these extension leads. But today, I've got a couple of extension leads. So these are for 3-pin fans, and these are for the 4-pin fans. Um, and these are just going to allow us to make sure we connect all of our RGB devices to the motherboard. But again, if you're buying new new fans in the pack, they should come with a controller, so you shouldn't need this. Other things we're going to need for the build today is a screwdriver with a Phillips head on it, just a regular number two Phillips head screwdriver. This is a ratchet version, but any old screwdriver will do. You'll also need a screw with a small enough head that's going to be able to use um, the M2 socket size. So that's why I've got my iFixit kit here. This comes in very handy. And this has got a very small Phillips head on it, um, and that's going to work out really nicely for securing the M2 SSD down later. Um, you will need something with this size head to install an M2 SSD, so make sure you, you've got that prepared in advance. But you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a, a full iFixit kit, though it is, it is pretty handy to have this. I also suggest um, just getting some sort of tray that you can put all your screws in and that's just going to stop them from sort of flying around and you're not going to lose them and that kind of thing. So the first thing I've done is um, out of the motherboard box I've taken out the IO shield which is this silver piece here. If you have a motherboard with a built-in IO shield you don't need to take that. I've also taken out the um, M2 screws because we're going to need those to secure our SSD down later um, and we can just keep those off to our side here so we've got a nice safe place for the screws. So what I like to do is just lay the anti-static bag down on top of the motherboard box and then we can use this as sort of a platform in order to place our motherboard down here. First thing I like to do with any motherboard that I'm installing a system on is to put the M2 SSD in here. Now because we are using a Gen 3 SSD, um, I'm going to put it in the lower slot because when you have the graphics card here, it, you'd have to take the graphics card out if you wanted to install an extra one in this slot. So by putting it in this slot, it means that the top slot is then free. If you want to upgrade the M2 SSD in the future, 
that means you don't need to take out the graphics card in order to do that. So it's one of those quality of life things that you get from having plenty of experience building PCs, but hopefully that can give you a nice shortcut. Um, if it's a Gen 3, I tend to put it in the lower slot. If you're never ever going to use a Gen 4 SSD, then it's fine to put it in the top slot as well. Um, they're all compatible, but um, for the purposes of this, I'm gonna put this in the lower slot here. So you just um, see the fork there with the little small nib, that sort of lines up with the small nib there on the slot. So we're just going to gently slide that in at an angle and then lay it flat. And then here, there's sort of the standoff here that we can screw it down into. And we just need one of those M2 screws that we had, we saved out of the packet earlier. We're going to need that small M2 screwdriver and just secure that onto, the, onto it there. You might just wiggle around a bit, but that's fine. And just hold the SSD down, pop the screw into the hole, and then just spin until it's nice and tight. You don't have to force it, it doesn't have to be super tight. As long as it's held down, that's fine. If you are using the top slot, it's pretty much the same deal. All you'd do is take the screws out of either side, pop that heatsink cover off. There'll be a little plastic tab that you just need to remove and leave the thermal paste behind. Um, and then all you need to do is just lay your SSD down and then screw this heatsink back on. It's very, very easy. So now that I've got the SSD in place, I like to put the memory in next. When you've got two sticks of memory, it's best to put them in slots two and slots four, because this is the way you should be putting them first, according to the diagram on the motherboard down here. This will be the same on pretty much every modern motherboard. If you're putting four sticks in, you could just put all four sticks in, absolutely no problem. So you see on the RAM here, it's got a little tooth, so it's toothed if you like, or it's keyed, is what we like to say. And you see how it's shorter on one side than the other side. Now if we take a look at the slot in the motherboard here, you'll see that the slot is actually slightly longer on the upper edge of the screen. So that means that we want the long edge of this to line up with that. And you can't actually insert this wrong, but if you push hard enough you will break it, so just be careful. You want to make sure it, both ends of the, the tag, the, sort of the tabs are out and ready to receive. I just put it at a slight angle like this to make sure it's in the slot and just line up the slot at the top as well and then rotate until it's, it slides into the slot. So that's halfway done. Then we need to click in the bottom until you hear the nice pop and then you just click the top in until you hear the nice pop. If you're pushing it fairly firmly and nothing's happening, you might have it the wrong way up, so just uh, take a look and make sure you got it keyed the correct way. And then of course you just rinse and repeat to put your other stick inside. Bingo! So the next thing we need to do is put our processor in the socket, which is here. So the first thing you need to do is just remove the arm, so pull it back towards you and then up in the air, and that will just release the slot slightly backwards. And as we're using an AMD socket, we're, we're using an AMD processor. That means that we've got the pins on the processor itself. So we just need to be really careful that we don't bend any of these to so make sure you're holding the processor by the edge, always holding by the edge. Ryzen CPUs will always sit in this orientation. So the Ryzen will face in the direction that you see now. But as another way to check, there is a small, very, very small, hopefully my camera can autofocus on that, perhaps not, <laughs> in the corner there towards the top left of, of our screen in the CPU, there's a little gold sort of triangle and that will line up with a small triangle towards the top left corner of the socket there. So that's another way that you can test that it's the right way around, but the writing on the Ryzen will always go this way. That's the way that I do it. So with the CPU, we're going to gently, very, very gently pop it over the socket. You do not ever push down on, on a CPU, you just hover it over the socket those pins on the CPU will go into the holes on the socket. Just give it a very, very slight wiggle around just to make sure it's all um, seated properly. And then I like to rotate the board around a few times just to make sure that there's not any edge of the CPU that's lifted up. And all those edges look absolutely fine. So I don't push down here, I'm not pushing, I'm just holding it nice and still to make sure it's not going to, to spin out. And then I take the lever here, push the lever down and push it down and it should hook right underneath that piece of plastic that we took it off before. So now our CPU is seated correctly. What we're going to do now is put on our liquid cooler. So in many how-to guides, you'll see that they put the radiator side of the cooler into the computer first. But the way I like to do it 
is by putting the pump head of the liquid cooler on here first outside the case as I find that is a lot lot easier for managing later on. So I'll just briefly show you the liquid cooler. So this part here is called the radiator and this is where you attach your fans. It's where all the heat is going to be pushed out of the radiator which is going to cool your CPU. Then you've got the hoses and then that leads to what I like. I just call this the pump block or the pump head. Basically it's it's where the pump is situated and it's the bit that contacts the CPU. So you can see we've got a nice slug of copper underneath this sticker here and that's going to help us with some heat transfer. So those are the parts really. Um, obviously the fans also come in the packet. Um, so let's show you what else comes with this particular cooler. But remember that all coolers are going to be a little bit different. So if you're using a different cooler to this one, just make sure you're following the user manual for that particular one. So we have some screws here. Now these are, the long ones are for fixing the fans to the radiator and the shorter ones are for fixing the radiator to the case. Oftentimes they'll come with um, some thermal paste, um, but sometimes on some liquid coolers, um, the thermal paste will be pre-applied onto the pump head, which does save you a little bit of time. If you do have the um, paste already applied to this when it comes out of the box, there's no need to wipe it off and put some other paste on because it was just not going to make much difference to your performance whatsoever. The other screws we have here are just basic fittings that you're going to need to install it. Um, again, this is going to vary depending on the cooler that you chose. On this particular one, we've also got um, this which will attach to the, uh, to the pump head, which is going to fix it. And then we've also got um, a back plate, which is this thing here. And that goes on the other side of the board and it acts as sort of a mounting point for the CPU cooler. Again, every CPU cooler is a little bit different, so sometimes you won't need this. It will use the one that's already built into the board. Some coolers will hook over the little hooks on the edge of these mounting kit bits here. It's all going to depend on the cooler that you choose, but for today's, um, we're going to be following it through as recommended by ID Cooling. So what we need to do now is remove what we call the AMD mounting kit, because we need to install the backplate that came with the liquid cooler. So we need to install the back plate that came with the cooler. So we're going to take the motherboard, take out the default back plate, the stock one, and turn the motherboard over gently. You see the holes here where the where the old um, back plate was, the stock one. So we're going to take our back plate that came with the cooler, we're going to place it down. Now the whole pattern will depend on your exact config, but in this case, you just want to line it up so that the inside of these and the inside of these are over the holes and you're going to be absolutely fine. In our box of fittings we had these screws, well they're kind of more just, they're more, well they are screws but there's nothing for them to screw into at the moment. Um, so we're just going to place these in through the holes that we mentioned a moment ago and you just sort of push them down and they, they sort of stay nice and firm. Try and line up the, the flat edges with the back plate and that will help keep those in place. When you're happy that those are secure, you want to put one hand on the back plate and the other hand will then flip the board back over to its normal orientation, just like that, and then place it down. If these sort of go awry, don't worry about that. You can just sort of wiggle it um, by putting the motherboard there and just sort of pulling from these and just wiggling it around so it's in the, in the correct place. But this looks absolutely fine to me, so I'm happy with that. This particular cooler comes with some washers that we need to place, so we're going to peel those off and just drop them on top of each of these. Basically just sort of stabilizes the back plate. As you can see, we all make mistakes because I just dropped one somewhere on the board, so I've got to go and find that. Don't expect to get it perfect on your first try. And this particular kit also comes with these standoffs, which are going to help um, make sure that the pump head isn't too close to the CPU. So we're just going to screw those on. There might be a particular way on that they like to go, so you just sort of screw those on from the top. You do all this bit by hand. Lovely, so now that we've got all those on, you need to make sure that we have to hand these um, thumb screws here, which are for securing the liquid cooler down. Just make sure you've got those to hand so you can reach them easily. Now, before you do any screwing down of the pump head itself, which is this bit, you want to think about which way round do I want my tubes to go. 
And you can do this just by holding it up against the case and just sort of envisioning which way you want it to go. Now, for me, with this one, um, this one's actually scratched, so we're going to we're going to swap this one out and send it back. But the principle is still the same. What I'm going to do is have it this way round, because then my tubes are going to be on the left, and that's going to allow me to sort of hook this round and have the radiator at the top of the case like that. So I've envisioned the envisioned the way it's going to go. I think this looks better. Some people you might just you might just want to put it round this way, but then of course that you get on all that crimpled tubing and it's not going to look very nice so always plan out the way that you're going to have your radiator um, orientated. So something very important to note is that a lot of coolers, um, especially if they're ones that don't come with pre-applied paste, will have this kind of sticker on them um, to protect like the surface of the copper from being scratched so just make sure that you always take this sticker off before putting it down otherwise um, obviously this is going to get in the way of your heat transfer. This cooler just requires you to put this mounting adapter on, which is really easy to do. You just sort of pop it on like that, find a slot, and then you just turn it uh, clockwise, and then it, it sort of locks on. It's not particularly stable, but that's because we haven't screwed it down yet. So we've got our thermal paste here, um, and we just need to open that up. So the way I do that is because it's got a plastic wrap on it. I just sort of hold my scissors and spin it round, and you can just pop that, that black bit off there. Just place that off to the side there. So with this stuff, it usually comes with enough applications to do the cooler maybe twice, so you don't need to use all of it. I mean, if you put all of it on, it's not going to be the end of the world, but it's better to have sort of just about the right amount. So for me, all I do with the Ryzen processors is just a blob in the middle. Don't be like too fussy about how much it is. Like a pea-sized amount is, is probably about right. That might even be a little bit too much, but it'll be fine. There's no need to change that. And is the pressure of the cooler going on there, it's going to cause all that paste just to completely spread out. Um, but really, in reality, the, the method that you use to put the thermal paste on doesn't really matter. Just put um, the right amount on. So we have our pump head here. And we just want to make sure we're lining up the correct mounting holes. Again, this will be in the user manual. And you just push it down so that you've got the screws sticking through all four of those holes. And what you want to make sure that you're maintaining nice firm pressure with your hand here, and that's going to ensure that when you're screwing it down, that you're not you know, putting too much um, tension on one side and not on the other. It's also going to help with spreading out that thermal paste properly. So if you follow my instructions and have those um, thumb screws to hand, you should be able to easily reach them. Take your thumb screw, just pop it on the right one here, Give it maybe six or seven turns, but don't tighten it all the way. Make sure you've always got one hand holding down the, uh, the the pump head to ensure that you've got a nice even pressure. I'm going to take this next thumb screw and put it on the back left, so we're going in a diagonal pattern. And again, that's going to help with um, even mounting pressure across the, the cooler itself. Again, just five or six, seven turns. Doesn't really have to be exact. And then we're just going to go for the bottom left now. So you're just always doing it in a diagonal fashion, and that's um, the best way to get your thermal paste to spread out properly and to ensure nice even contact across the CPU. And we'll just finally do that back right one. There you go, that's six or seven turns. And now what I'm going to do is just tighten each one all the way. So um, the purists will tell you you should just do maybe one or two turns and keep going this the diagonal pattern, but it's going to be okay if we just tighten this one all the way down and then tighten that corner all the way down. We've got sufficient tension from when we did it with our thumb um, earlier that we don't have to worry about the uneven pressure anymore, so we just tighten all those down. Never have to force any screws. If you feel too much resistance, never force it. So we've done pretty much everything we need to do on the motherboard. We've got our cooler with our CPU underneath, we've got our memory, we've got our storage. The only thing we need to do now with this still on the table is attach our fans. Now again, this is something where you're going to have to visualise it. So if I'm visualising that I'm going to have this cooler at the top of the case like this, I want to make sure that the cables from the fans are going you know, towards the back of the case, which will be, from this perspective, down in the air. So we have our radiator here, and this is um, one of our cooling fans that we're going to use, the ID cooling fan that we've salvaged from before. And we're just going to visualise where we want that. So remember, if we're having it this way up, we want to make sure that the fan cable is coming out of the bottom. 
so that um, so that when you mount this in the top of the case, you don't have the uh, the cables coming out the front of the radiator because that will look quite ugly. So you just want to make sure you've got that nicely lined up. Now with any fan, remember that the pretty side of it is where the air is going into and the ugly side of it is where the air is going out from. That's how I always remember it. Some fans will also have like an arrow printed somewhere on the side, but pretty much in all cases, the nice looking side is where the air is going in and then it will come out of the side that's got the ugly writing on it. So just like we said, we're going to line that up. I mentioned earlier about these long screws being for securing the fans to the radiator, so let's use those now. So these go all the way through the fan here and into the little hole there. So you just sort of line that up, take your screwdriver and tighten it down. Don't tighten this first one all the way down yet because you might need a bit of manoeuvrability in the rest of the fan to get the holes to line up. So just get it fairly, fairly snug but not really tight. Take a second screw. Just like we did with the cooler, we want to go in a diagonal pattern. So we want to get the other diagonal on here. So we just feed that through and then just make sure that's lining up with the hole. If you've got cables there, make sure that they're feeding through in the correct direction so that you're not um, trapping them with the screw. Pop that through there, line that up with the hole. And then now, in my book, it's okay for you to tighten this all the way down, so let's just do that. Never force it. Once the, once the resistance becomes you know, fairly firm, then you can stop with the fans. It's not as important to get these super tight like it is with the cooler. And we can just line those other screws up. They should perfectly align now that you've got those other two diagonals in. There we go. There you go, so you've got your four screws in there. Then you obviously do the same again and just mirror it with another fan there. Um, but I'm not going to show you that because that is pretty boring to watch somebody do the same thing twice. Okay, so we've put the motherboard away and now we want to make sure our case is sorted out. So this is our Thermaltake S100TG in white. So we're just going to peel off some of the plastic there just so we can take this away. This particular case has um, like a door hinge mechanism here for the case, so you just open it up, lift, and then take away the glass. Pop that somewhere nice and safe. I want to take the dust filter off the top because we don't really want that in the way for now, but again, keep that somewhere safe. We also want to take the front panel off the PC, uh, off the PC case, I should say. This just has a little lip underneath here and you just pull on that nice and firmly and that should pull the whole front panel away. Don't be worried, we all have to pull quite hard. So this is where obviously our fans are going to mount here. Then we can take off the side panel, the back panel or the cable management panel, which has just got a couple of screws on the back here. So we can just unscrew one and two. And then this just slides back and off. Again, pop this panel somewhere safe. So we can see this is sort of our bare bones case now. Um, oftentimes the screws that you need for fixing the case will be inside this uh, drive sled here. So we just take that bag out, pop it down, and we can pop this drive cage back inside. There we go, we have our screws and cables there. Any twist ties that the PC case already comes with, I like to just remove those. Just pull those out, we can always manage those cables later. With this case in particular, the first thing I like to do is get the, the airflow fan sorted, so the three front fans and the one rear fan. We've already got a black fan in the rear here, so we're going to need to remove that in order to put our nice RGB fan in. Seeing as we're already looking at the back panel, let's put a rear fan inside. So this is another one of our um, ID cooling RGB fans that we had in stock, so we are using those for today's build. So again, like we said earlier, the air goes in the pretty side and comes out the ugly side, okay? So you want to make sure that it's going to be this way round, so that the air is coming out of the back of the case, if that makes sense. You see we've got the cable here. In order to make the cable management easier, we want the cable to run 
you know, up and out to the side of the back here. So the way we want to do that is by having the fan mounted like this, because then the cable doesn't have as far to travel. If we put the, the fan around this way, you then have to wrap the cable all the way around the fan and out the back, and it becomes very ugly. So let's go ahead and screw this fan in, which is very simple. Let's make sure we've got the correct way around and that you've got your cable in a nicely easy to manage location. So we now have our rear fan in place. Now let's do the front fans. This is our front fan array. You can't see quite the top of the case, but we're going to have one, two, three RGB fans. Again, just like any fan, remember it goes in the pretty side and out the ugly side. So again, we want to orientate the logo so that it's going to make it easier for us to route them. What we're going to do is we're going to place it here. And then that's what that's going to allow us to do is route our fans through the little side holes here. And that's exactly what these holes are for. So it helps you with your cable routing because if then you don't have loads of ugly cables going into the case. Because we've got it on this top right side here, that's going to make it nice and easy for us to route our cables through. If you don't like the way this back sticker looks, I completely understand. You might just be able to, if you just buy like a big sheet of sticker from Amazon, you can cut this down into circles and cover that up, or you can buy pre-cut circles um, just to cover that label up if you really wanted to. So for our, in our case, because we want it's nicer for the, the text to look the right way up, we're going to have them mounted um, so this way, like that. It's a bit harder to make sure you get the heights correct when you've got three fans in place, but we're going to do our very best. There we go, so we have our case fans in place. Now that we've flipped this round, um, there's an important note, especially when you're working on a case like this. Some cases, um, they're what they call the PCIe slot covers. Sometimes they're just held in with a screw on the side, which you can undo and pull out. But in this case, they're the, what, what I like to call the snappy types. So you need to make sure you take these out before putting your motherboard in. Now, because we know that our long slot of our motherboard is going to line up with these ones here, we know graphics cards take up two or three slots. In our case, it's two slots. You need to make sure you're snapping the, the correct number off and the correct one. So we know that our top two slots are going to be um, used, so we need to make sure that we snap those out. So you just push from the center, lift from inside the case, and then you just sort of wiggle up and down, up and down, up and down until the, the, uh, the whole piece just snaps off nice and clean like that. Now in this case, don't worry if you take off the wrong one and you know you worry that there's going to be just a big gaping hole because Thermaltake actually do provide a couple of um, spare things that you can screw in here to to cover that so not a big deal if you do end up taking all of them out um, but personally I just take out the ones that I need to take out these aren't reusable so just chuck them straight out okay so at this point you might be thinking how exciting let's get the motherboard in and get our computer up and running but not yet. So the thing that I like to do next is pop the power supply in. And if you're using any mechanical two and a half inch drives, I suggest you install them in the bay now, but we're not doing that for our build today. But of course, for a bit of um, aesthetic flair today, we are going to be vinyl wrapping this power supply in white so that it fits with the theme of the PC. Because, I don't know if you can see that from here, but in this case, there is a cutout on the other side here so you can view the power supply from the presentation side of the case. So therefore, by having that in white, it's going to look really nice. If your case doesn't have that hole there, you know, this back one here, then there's no need to wrap the power supply because you're not going to see it. So we're going to use our sticky vinyl wrap. So when you place the power supply in the PC, in general, you want it so the fan faces towards the floor and it gets its own fresh supply of air from the ground and exhausts out the back. But if your case like this one does have perforations, those little holes above where the power supply is located, it's also acceptable to have it fan facing up as well, because at least it's got, whichever way you put it, it's going to have access to fresh air. And theoretically, by putting it up this side up in the case, you'll probably get less, less dust accrued um, inside it. But I think for a blanket rule, let's say fan facing down and you're always going to be safe. Because the fan's facing down for this, we want our, our white wrap to be just along this edge. There's no need for us to wrap all of this, just the edge that's going to be showing um, through the hole in the side. So the first thing to do is just to cut out a section 
that we're going to use to wrap our power supply. And we just want to check that that is indeed going to wrap the power supply. Yes, that's excellent. We obviously don't want to wrap this over the fan on the bottom because that's going to introduce some cooling problems. So you only really need a little, just a tiny lip of this over there just to secure it down. I have some edges here with some overhang. So what we can do about that is just cut a little slit in each corner. We can then fold down one edge and fold the other edge straight over the top of that. There you go, you've got a white wrapped power supply. This is just to show you, I'm going to redo this so that it looks a little bit nicer um, and then I'll see you once we've done that. So there we go. So we've wrapped our power supply in a lovely white colour to give it a bit of a um, bit of extra artistic flair. And now what we're going to do is actually install the power supply within the case. So like we said, fan side down, simply slide it in nice and gently, try not to catch any edges. Now that you know that's in, you can just position it towards the rear like this. Now here you have these screw holes. The reason why there's so many is because it this case will allow you to mount the power supply with the fan side up if you want. Power supply will come with these hexagonal shaped screws, which is what you use to fix it in the case. If your power supply is flicked on, make sure it's flicked off to the zero, just for safety later on. And just reposition until you can sort of see where the, where the screw hole openings are and that you can fix it in place. So in our top corner here, there's a nice little hole. That's a perfect place for us to route our CPU power cable through, as well as bringing the rear fan cables back towards us. So from our pile of cables that we'll have coming out of our power supply, we need to find the one that says CPU on it. It's the one that splits into two and two, usually. And then what I want you to do is route your cable through that hole at the top. The reason we want to do this before putting the motherboard in is it makes it a lot, lot easier to hook this power cable up. So we're going to pop that through the hole up there. Give it plenty of slack going through. You can always pull it back again. So that one's now in place. We don't have to worry about our other cables for now. We're going to pick up our case and just carefully place it down on its back. Any of these, um, any of the power cables, you need to move them out of the way. Okay, so we have quite a bird's eye view here, so my voice might sound a little bit uh, indistinct, but let's go through what we're going to do now. So we've got the PC laid on its side. You can see all the power supply cables there in that central hole. We're going to shove those out of the way, and then we're going to gently place our motherboard inside. So I appreciate the camera angle may not be perfect for everything we're about to do, but I'm going to do my best to try and show you what we're doing. So you want to make sure that this um, central hole here is clear of any cables that are going to be sticking up, because you don't want to fix your motherboard down and then find out that you've trapped a cable underneath. You can see that we've fed our CPU power cable through here. These are the two fan cables here that we had from that rear fan, so we're going to feed those through that small hole in the top corner there. You want to take that IO shield, like if you have one of these for your motherboard, make sure we install it now. These thick ones that stick out, I just like to bend those back. There's one there, one there, the rest you can leave alone. They always go this way up so that you always have your displays are more towards the top and your audio ports tend to be more towards the bottom, so that's how you know which way your output is. You can always sort of line this up against your motherboard just to make sure that this is going to be going in the right way. What you need to do is, on the, on the rear of your case, it goes into this uh, rectangle here, this rectangular hole here, and it just sort of crisps on, as I like to say. So you sort of line it up, push the top in nice and hard, keep one finger on the top, and then just try and push the the bottom edge in and all the corners until that's nicely secured in there and it will hold its own weight. 
So now what we're going to do is actually put our motherboard inside. So we need to clear out this cable mess from the middle, shove that off to the side somewhere. So here's our motherboard with our liquid cooler attached. Now you see on the motherboard there's those holes on the left and the centre and the right there. Those are going to correspond with what we call standoffs, which are little sort of screw receptors that stand proud of the, the case. So we've got three along the top, three along the middle and two along the bottom. We need to make sure those are going to line up perfectly with our motherboard. If they don't, you need to make sure you remove those properly and put them in the right place. Three on the top, three in the middle, one, two, three, and then two along the bottom. Also make sure that the standoffs are going to line up perfectly with the hole in the motherboard, otherwise you're going to be in for a bad time. So we're going to make sure we're not trapping any cables underneath the board. Lay the board inside the case. I, I offset it to the right a little bit to start with. Liquid cooler, you can store that wherever you want. I'm just going to put it down towards the bottom here for now. So you can see this is now not lined up because you can see there's standoffs up here. We need to make sure we're lining those holes up. So you just want to gently lift the motherboard all in one piece and just line those holes up whilst also lining up the rear ports of the PC with that silver IO shield that we just put in. So make sure those ports line up perfectly. So once those are lined up and the, and the, screw, and the, the screw holes on the standoffs are lined up, then we're ready to fix this motherboard down. So motherboard fixing screws are typically the ones with the little sort of screw with a little sort of halo, a little flat piece around them. This will come with the case. Some cases are a little bit different, so they might have different cases, but uh, different screws, but this case has the standard motherboard screw. I like to have all the ones I'm going to need in my left hand whilst I screw down with my right hand. That means I don't have to keep leaning over to try and get more screws. I'm going to put it on my screwdriver, now, this might require a bit of dexterity, but what you're going to do is hold the motherboard to the left so it's all those holes are lined up perfectly and then screw with the right hand. So I'm going to pull slightly across, make sure that those holes are all lined up perfectly. I'm just going to place one right in the centre hole here. I'm just going to fix that down. Again, until it's nice and tight, but you're not forcing it. And then you're going to get another screw and we're just going to do the top center one. And then repeat the process for the bottom center one. That gives us a nice solid sort of spine of support along the motherboard there into the case. So now I'm just going to check to make sure all my ports are lined up in the back correctly. Yes, they are, they're all accessible making sure there's no trapped cables underneath the motherboard itself. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the other screw holes now. So there's a top right, top left, and then the two along the bottom as well. Great, so now that those are all screwed down, we can take our CPU power cable and plug that in. So the CPU power cable has like these sort of thick clip bits on one side. Those go towards the top of the case, and then you plug that into the hole. There's also a little lip on the power connector, which sadly I can't show you here, but that lip corresponds with the side that you put these little tabs on. So make sure that, that CPU power connector is nice and firmly secured in. So now, now that we've got that secured in, we're ready to stand the PC back up to its normal orientation again. At this point it's probably quite exciting because you can see that the PC really is starting to take shape but we've still got a little bit of work to do so I think the first thing we're going to do is feed through the cables from our liquid cooler so we have um, five cables in total we have this one here which comes from the uh, CPU block so the pump so you can either disconnect this and just plug this into a fan header on the board or you can just leave it plugged in to SATA power, which will run the pump at 100%. And I think that's going to be fine. And also by running the pump at 100%, you get the brightest light from the, the pump head as well. So we're going to stick with that, I believe. But for now, I'm just going to disconnect it because we want to route our cables nice and neatly. So I'm going to pop it underneath the uh, mounting hardware there, up around the side, underneath the mounting hardware again. Like so, that keeps things looking nice and neat. Then 
Then I can just hook that back up to this connector here for the SATA power and then just feed the whole lot through that little gap at the top and that keeps your cable looking nice and neat there so you don't have loads of cable bulk. So now is the liquid cooler cables, so we've got the cables here and here and those should go through these two gaps very nicely. So I'm just going to lift that up, it might be a bit hard to see while I'm doing this but I'm going to lift the cooler up I'm going to sort of put it in the orientation that I was expecting it to be in, which is like that. Take the cables and just feed them straight through the holes at the back here. Like so. What I'm going to do at this point is take one, take the um, fan speed cable, which is the four pin plug with the little ridge on the connector. I'm just going to hook that up to the CPU fan header, which is in the top center here. Make sure the post on that fan header, which comes off the motherboard, lines up with the slot on the actual plug piece and just slide it on like that. It's easier to do this now because once the, it's mounted in the top here, it's a bit harder to reach over to those fan headers. I'm going to take my other fans cables and just pop that through this other hole here. And that's going to help keep our cables nicely tightly managed, which is going to con contribute to the, cr the clean look that we're going for this build. So there we go, so you can see how that has felt sort of fed in really nicely there. So we can adjust these pipes a little bit, just very gently pull them down, and we're looking pretty tasty there. So now we need to secure this to the top, so this is going to require the other screws that came with your liquid cooler, so in my case they look like uh, look like this one, just sort of a flat, sort of thickish screw. And those are going to go in the top here, onto the mounting holes on the top. So if I just tip it forward to show you. So they've got mounting holes, so this would be for a 240mm liquid cooler, and the ones further back are for a 280mm cooler. But I wouldn't recommend using a 280mm cooler in this particular case, because it does get very tight, so I'd stick with a 240 Um then you can just line up the holes here. You can see the holes poking through and that's where we're going to screw um, our screws into. Again, go in a diagonal pattern, one, two, three, four, and then do the center ones afterwards. So one of the tricks that I like to do is just put two screws in the top, but leave them slightly loose. And that's gonna allow you just to slide this back and forth and find the exact location that you want. So I want it about there. So that means that now I will secure those two screws down to stop it moving and then I can secure down the other screws on the top of the case. So now that we've finished with um, the top of the case, we can actually pop our dust filter back on. So let's grab that and just pop that on top. Cool, we're looking pretty dang nice, aren't we? We're looking pretty sweet. I really like how this wrap on the power supply looks. I think it looks really cool. Um, so the next thing to do is just uh, to sort out some of the fan routing and hook up some of the cables here. So let's do that. So it looks like a bit of a bloody mess on the back here, doesn't it? So we're gonna to need to sort some of this out, make it look nice and neat and hook everything up. Now, I'm not one of these people that's a huge stickler for getting the cable management super tight because it's just not really very important and it's not very practical either. But we still want to make it look nice and neat. And crucially, we want to be able to actually fit that rear panel back on again. So I like to start by separating all of the cables and that gives me sort of a clearer view of what I'm needing to route first. So our CPU power cable, we can pull off some of the slack of that and just tuck that in the side there. And then from our front panel, which is the stuff on the left here, we can start hooking some of this up. So USB is for our USB 2.0, so we can take that and we'll feed that up to the sort of the middle channel here and just pull that through from the other side. This is our front panel. We can pop that through this near side hole here and pull that through. This is our USB 3. On this case, our USB 3 is mounted this way on the side, so we can leave this one for a moment and hook that up later. This is our HD audio connector. Let's see if we can see that on the camera yet. So this is what does the, the, the audio jacks on the front there. So we can feed this round, move these cables out of the way, pop this in the far side hole here and pull that through. And then we got to look at where we're going to put our fans. So we have um, a couple of fan headers on, on this side on our motherboard. So 
We can take this one and potentially pop it around the other side. So let's take this one, pop it through this hole here. And we know we've got another one, so perhaps if we take this one and also pop that around there. Good, so that's a good start. Let's start plugging some of those in. So we have our HD audio connector here. Now, the thing is with the HD audio connector, and indeed a lot of the connectors, is you need to pay attention to the slots here. So you can see if I put the light on it there, that you've got a certain number of holes and then you've got one that's blanked out. Now that's going to correspond with the, with the uh, socket itself. But essentially you want to line up the blanked out slot here with the missing pin on the board. So we're going to pop that in like so. Now I've also got a USB 2.0 header here. Again, this has got a corner one that's um, blanked out, so that's going to match up with a missing pin on the corner here. And then we just plug that in like so, and just pop, push the excess back through. This is the front panel connectors. These are the ones that are the biggest pain in the Aris because they're so, so tiny. So I like to pull them apart a little bit just to separate them, makes it a little bit easier to hook them up. Now, you're going to have to look at your motherboard manual to know which um, pins to, put, uh, to actually plug these into. I know this because I've done like hundreds of these and they're all the same. So they'll be in a row of pins and then there'll be also be one missing. So I know that the reset switch goes on the two, the sort of the two central pins along the bottom row is for the reset switch. The bottom right pin actually isn't used, so we can leave that blank. And our power switch goes directly above the reset switch. And you can see, even though I'm quite experienced, it is really tough to get these to actually stay on. There we go, so power switch just above that. And then I know to the left on the bottom, we put in our hard drive LED, and you put that with the writing facing down. And then the power LED is um, minus on the right of the top pins there, and then plus is on the left, and that's in the top left corner. But it's much easier if you just look at in your motherboard manual about the layout for those. I'll just pull the excess through, and we'll just hook up our USB 3 cable. So that's the big chunky one with the blue on it. I like to put that through this hole here, and then you need to line up. There's a little ridge on the connector itself there. And that will line up with the little slot that's on the uh, on the plug itself. These are very, very friable, these pins in this socket, so do not force it because you could easily, easily bust up the USB 3 socket by putting it in there. Really take your time with that USB 3 connector because, as I said, those pins are very friable. Good. We're doing really well so far. So now I think the next thing to do will be to hook up some more of our fans and some of the RGB. So on this board, this motherboard, you'll find in the bottom left is where our four pin RGB connectors are. And then for our three pin RGB, there's one in the bottom right and in the top right as well, hidden away up there. So that's where we're going to need to plug in our RGB. Today I'm using these splitters, however, if you're buying a new kit of fans, you'll have a hub included, so you should hook up that hub instead of using these um, splitters. It's one trick that I like to do, because um, these tend to sort of split apart quite easily. So I'll just get a bit of sellotape and just wrap it round. Sometimes the simple ideas are the best. So we did have um, a SATA plug here, which is going to power our pump. So let's make sure that we hook that up now. So there's a little ridge on the plug that lines up with the ridged slot on the uh, on the power plug there. So just got to hook up the front three fans, and for that I'm using this uh, this three-way splitter for the fan speed. But again, if you've bought a kit of RGB fans, that should come with some kind of hub or splitter in the box anyway. So 
So we've still got to hook up our power to our motherboard and these are power cables for the graphics card that we haven't put in yet. So let's um, get that motherboard um, in now, this motherboard power cable. So we're going to take our 24-pin um, extension lead and to just pop that in straight in from this angle. Make sure you're lining up this clip piece with the outside this way towards the front of the case um, and that ensures that that's going to clip on properly. You've got to push it fairly firm and you must feel it click into place. If it doesn't click in, it's not in properly. And you're going to take your back end and just wrap it straight through. I like to go to the top here because it helps with the cable management, but going for the middle one, uh, middle cable hole is also fine. What I am going to do is just push this uh, cable comb back just to make it a bit easier to fold that center section. Pop that through. out of the way completely. Give a much cleaner look. There we go. So at this point we can actually put our graphics card in. How exciting. There it is. Absolutely beautiful. Take off the PCIe rubber cover as well as the rubber covers on the display ports. And you also want to take off the plastic covering that's on these fans. So there's three fans, so we're going to make sure we take off three pieces of clear plastic. You always line it up this way so that you have your screw holes on the left, the PCIe interface here, and that's going to go straight into this socket here. There's a little bump in the socket there, and that corresponds with the hole in the connector there. So you're going to take your graphics card, gently maneuver it in, push it to the left, and just line up that PCIe connector with the long slot. Make sure it's nice and level and give it a nice firm push. Firm push on all sides to make sure it's fully embedded. And then you're going to take a couple of the hex screws that come with your case, so these kind of style of screws here. I'm just going to use that to secure them here. One thing I like to do is I always look at the rear displays here. I want to make sure that they're all going to be accessible because the last thing I want is to screw it in and then find that all those displays end up going up like that and you can't actually access them. So I'm going to lay it down. We're going to hold this nice and steady in position here. Whilst it's in that position, we're going to screw it in, holding the card there, resisting any movement that the card tries to make. And we'll just put the second screw in to secure it. So there we go, our beautiful graphics card is in place. So let's hook up a nice white extension power cable, which we have here. The ridged, the ridged part here, that's going to correspond with a little ridge that you see on the top of the power connector. You're just going to place that in, go in as straight as possible, and you need, might need to wiggle it a bit to get it to go in, and then you hear it click on. That's perfect, you can adjust your combs however you like, and we're just going to place it through this cable management hole here. For a lovely clean look, that's fantastic. So we could do our graphics card one first, so we just need the PCIe cable. Make sure you clip that one piece onto the other three, so it's nicely secure. And then you're just going to plug that into your extension down here. A little tip that I have, I always lead with the side that has the two on it and sort of lead it in like that. And that does help sort of uh, a nice smooth plug in. So let's get to tidying these cables up. So we could bunch them up a little bit like this. Pull the ones from the front through nice and tight. 
and you've got all these sort of these little loopy bits which are perfect for just hooking around these cable ties. A little trick that I like to do with the cable ties is just to fold down on, on the on the curved edge and that makes it easier then to hook it round through these little holes here. So you can just feed that through and then you just pop the loose end through the little adapter hole and then you can pull it tight. There's also another little one here that we can use to sort of hook those cables up nice and high so they don't show too much through the case. So we can pull that off to the side like that and pop it in through there. Keep it all looking tidy. Okay, so we've done sort of the best we can with the cable management. When you've got a small case like this and these long cable extensions, it is really, really hard to get all this um, properly cable managed. So I think we've done an all right job. And to be honest, as long as it looks good from the other side, it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna lay that case down on this side now, flatten things as much as pos, and we're going to put the opaque side panel back on. Now we just need to put our front piece back on. So that just pushes straight back on, on all four corners. And there we go. We've also got the glass panel that we can put back on here as well. So we can do that. So just hook that back over the hinges. Lovely, and then we can hook up the power. So we are booted. We are working, fans all lighting up nicely, RAM lighting up, and we have what we call a post, which is power on self-test. Just shows us that the PC is up and running. So there's just a few things that we need to do next. So this is the motherboard BIOS, and um, there's only a few settings that you need to do. You might want to flash to the latest version, but the key things you want to do is turn on the XMP profile for your memory, go into your fan info, and then you want to hit the cog and you can set some uh, curves here. Um, what I tend to do ideally is I leave this on auto or um, PWM depending on what kind of fans that you've got. And then I tend to set all of the fan curves to be something a little bit like this. So I'd put 100 up to 100. I'd drop this curve down to here. And this just means that your fans will always run at about 40% and they'll just ramp up a little bit as the temperature increases. Um, and that should help keep everything nice and cool. Once you've done that, you just hit the X, and then want to go to Advanced, want to go to Settings, Advanced, PCI Subsystem Settings, and we're just going to turn on Resize Bar Support. In some games, you'll get a bit of a performance boost from that. And then once you're done, you can go in, go ahead and save an overclocking profile. Change the name if you want, or just click Save. Um, then you can come back to it next time, and then you just go to the X, save configuration exit, and you just click yes, and that's your BIOS set up. We're not going to be going over how to install Windows on this machine, um, but I do have a separate video that's going to show us how to do that. Um, and then we'll just crank some uh, gameplay, and then we'll see from there what kind of performance we get from this machine, and the final result. Mm -hmm.